Okay, we are live. Royce is all washed and dried. Royce, oh, he's such a sweetie. Okay, <clears throat> so then now that we have them all washed and dried, uh, what I'm gonna do is go through, there's still some more hair I was combing out while I was drying them. <clears throat> so, it feels, it feels awesome. <clears throat> so anyways, got that on him while he was still wet and then I dried them. So the conditioner gets to, you know, really kind of soak in, the hair kind of soaks up that conditioner. So now that he's all combed out, And normally I would, <clears throat> I would take, um, let them out for a break, you know, between the bath and the haircut, um, just so we can kind of break up the, the session a little bit. But with Royce here, he is just so uninterested in going outside with me. Um, as soon as we go outside, he just wants to come back in and he just wants to be done. So for Royce here, I just go right into the haircut and I just try to get it done as fast as possible for Royce's sake. All right, buddy. So get his head all combed and fluffed out here. There we go. There we go, comb it up. <coughs> all righty, so. I'm actually gonna comb this up when I clip it, but you know, combing it down just to get the hair to lay in the direction it's supposed to lay. Just to kind of train it, you know, train the hair to lay properly. There we go. Oh, we got some comments. And Watson, phew, I was worried I didn't get the notification. Oh, yeah, no, I was just you know, taking my time. Also, thank you for showing the products. I wrote every, oh, perfect. And you know, the most impro important product is elbow grease. He's behaving so, of course. He's behaving so good, right? Oh my goodness, Royce, thank you so much. Alrighty, so now that he's comfortable too, he's soft and comfortable. So now what I'm gonna do is, I like to go through his coat with a yellow comb. Well, um, in, the grooming, um, in the grooming world, this is an O comb. In the human hairstyler world, this is a five comb. Um, but it's still the same length, it's five eighths of an inch. But um, I usually use the metal comb guards, which gives me a nice smoother um, cut, a short, little shorter, cleaner. Um, the plastic combs doesn't really give me as clean and nice of a cut. So I may have to go um, the opposite way against the grain with a little bit longer um, comb guard. There's a three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters, this is 16 millimeters, so three millimeter difference. <clears throat> so I may have to go through backwards to smooth everything out, we'll see. So first, I'll comb everything up. Good boy, Royce. Okay, so sweet, right? <clears throat> Considering everything he's been through, like not, <laughs> not, not for this groom wise, but I mean, in his life, everything he's been through in his life, um, who knows what he was going through. You know, when they found him on the streets, he was just in horrible condition. Couldn't really even tell if he was a Bichon or not, really. Okay, oh, okay, it's because of this. You know what, let me turn that thing off for now. Plug that in. Okay, so now the clippers, I don't want to really rely on the clippers to do the haircut for me. What I want is for the uh, clippers to just give me a length, right? Just to set the length for me. <clears throat> and that way a lot of the hairs are gonna be the same length um, and it just gets it done faster for me. So, and that way I don't have to scissor everything, you know? So here in the neck, I, I'll just go against the grain just to kind of clean up around the neck a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm gonna follow the natural lines of the dog's body. So I highlight his natural angles. Let me go over this way here. <clears throat> and 
<clears throat> I have to kind of uh, fight the perfectionist in me. You know, when I see these like sticky outy hairs, you know, I want to keep going over and over it with the clippers. I just have to remind myself that I am going to go back over it with scissors and the scissors are going to, you know, just make everything nice and smooth for me. So, you know, I have to just kind of let those go and not, <clears throat> not, you know, OCD out, you know? Okay. One second, let me adjust. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> That's right, my mask here. Now I'm gonna lift this leg up here, straight forward. Not out to the side, but straight forward. There we go. You have to lay down. <laughs> okay. That's okay if he wants to lay down. It's all gotta get clipped anyways, you know? So. And look how white and clean he is, right? You know, it's, it's so awesome. So it really wasn't the shampoo products, you know? Like, it, he was white and clean, much whiter, much cleaner than he was when I first, you know, walked in here, just from the combing and, you know, brushing all that dead hair out. And now after the bath, you know, he has this beautiful, clean, white finish. I'm gonna ask him to stand just for a little bit, just for this. Thank you, buddy. Okay. So it looks pretty good. It looks like we won't really have to go, go back through. Oh yeah, that's right. So I'm gonna, there we go. That way he doesn't have to put any weight on that bad leg. There we go. Spent the last night taking my last flight to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Any comments here? Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Triple Lotus. Hey, what's up, Triple Lotus? What a good boy, Sarm Lee. Um, Lynn Puckett. Just finished doing my Maltese shoe. <laughs> You are my stay calm and forge until the end of my, thank you. How is he with the dryer? He was great. Um, that's Henry. It helped me to see you groom while he's laying down. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I ask them to stand when I need them to, but you know, I don't mind if he lays down. First Bijan I've seen without brown stains. Um, he had lots of brown stains, but again, the combing, combing out that dead hair. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All righty. So yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, I used to, when I first started, uh, you know, grooming differently, grooming, you know, differently than I was taught, you know, um, and I was not able to do like six to eight dogs in a day the way I used to, you know, if I was, if you have to take the time to comb everything, you know, like I do, then yeah, I mean, I went from like being able to do eight, sometimes 12 dogs a day to only being able to do about four dogs a day, you know, at the shop. And now I only do two dogs a day um, because I make house calls. But yeah, it used to really kind of uh, bother me and frustrate me and just like, oh, why is it not, why is it taking forever, you know? But now I realize, you know, it's gonna take as long as it needs to take, really, you know? You can't really force it. And then also, I ask myself all the time, um, if I'm gonna be here grooming this dog anyway, might as well fully be present, you know, be fully present and might as well really groom this dog, you know, to the best of my ability since I'm here anyway, you know, and I'm gonna groom this dog anyway. Might as well do my best, right? <laughs> well, I guess the other option is to hold back, not do my best, you know? Um, <coughs> not really give everything I, I can to this, uh, to, to, you know, to this activity, not give my all, 
you know, hold back a little bit, make sure I'm not too tired, <coughs> you know, and give them a mediocre haircut, a mediocre service, and he'll still be brown in some areas, and he'll probably be, you know, itchy too, he'll probably itch his paws, and his paws will get brown again, you know, and I guess that's all right, you know, but for me, I, I feel like if I'm gonna do it anyways, right, might as well do the best I can, you know, if you're gonna do it, might as well do it with some style. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, I just caught myself <clears throat> wanting to just kind of take a little shortcut and not comb this side up before I, you know, go down like I did on the other side. Um, <laughs> And the reason why I was gonna do that was to just save some time, you know, but um, again, it would end up taking me more time than I save if I don't uh, comb the other side up because the amount of times I would have to, you know, go over and over it to try to get a nice smooth cut to match this other side, you know, it kind of defeats its own purpose, you know, so <clears throat> the best shortcut, I believe, is to not take shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is that saying? There's two ways to do, do something. The right way, and again. <laughs> I really like that. Two ways to do something. The right way, and again. <laughs> uh, Mary Royer, are you able to make comfortable living doing two dogs though? Yeah, actually, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm comfortable living. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to pay my bills. Um, Elsie, Bijan Frise, yay. Um, Elsie, Jane, don't cut too much hair off. Okay, I won't. <laughs> <coughs> We're just really taking the tips. A little bit of the tips. See that? Not a lot's coming off. But enough, enough to help, you know, neaten up his shape. But yeah. <coughs> and that's the thing. Uh, I had to change my business model, honestly, so that I could, you know, sustain this business model of doing just two dogs a day, or oh, sometimes I do three dogs a day. But anyways, um, so now that I make house calls, I don't have a big overhead, you know? I don't have a big rent um, to cover. So by eliminating a big rent and a big overhead, you know, having to pay for utilities and all of that stuff, and I, I just wasn't prepared because, you know, I just, I didn't know that um, you get charged a higher rate for being a business so the electricity even costs more as a business owner than you would pay as your, you know, the, for the same electricity in a house, in residential. <clears throat> so residential and business is a big difference. Even the phone, <laughs> even, even um, the phone company charges you more, even internet, everything costs more if you're a business rather than residential. So that right there, I just never considered. Um, but yeah, by cutting down the overhead, now I'm able to enjoy, you know, just doing the dogs that I like to do, you know? And it's like, now um, I'm booked out, you know, <clears throat> I just do the same clients every month. Um, I, they're pretty much on a standing rotation all year, so I'm booked out for the rest of the year. Um, my waiting list <clears throat> has now been maxed up. I mean, technically, we can add as many people as we want to a waiting list, but at this point, um, there's over 10 people on our waiting list, and some of them have multiple dogs, so there's more than 10 dogs, more than a dozen dogs on our waiting list right now. So it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be realistic to expect a call back at this point if somebody joined our waiting list now. So, you know, we just, we just tell people that, and so technically, I guess, you know, we can always add more people to the waiting list, but we just say it's maxed out because, you know, it, I just, I just don't, I don't want to waste people's time, you know, and I don't want to give them false hope and thinking that, you know, they're on this waiting list and they might get called back, you know, and then they never get called back. And then, you know, that might also cause them to have negative feelings towards us, you know, who knows? <coughs> so... But yeah, here's the thing. 
Um, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not who someone else is today. And that's Jordan Peterson's fourth rule out of his 12 rules for living. But I really like that. So in, as far as my business goes, I realized that what I'm trying to do is something so different than what any other groomer or that groomer that I've met is trying to do. And because there's no mold for what I'm doing, you know, I had to kind of create my own mold. And when it didn't work out, <laughs> because I didn't have, you know, investors or any, I didn't have any capital, you know, behind, yeah, I didn't have any money to kind of cushion any mistakes. So anytime I made a mistake, that meant I went out of business <laughs> and I went in a lot of debt. And so just, you know, because I didn't have any money going in. So the, the, you know, I guess, what do they call that? Like the, the room, I didn't have any wiggle room. There was very little wiggle room for mistakes. I, you know, everything really had to go perfect <clears throat> in order for me to have succeeded. Cause I already, was kind of in debt and I had bad credit when I started my business. So anyways, yeah, because I had no mold to go off of, you know, nobody else had did this, has done anything like this before me. <clears throat> well, I mean, not the house call grooming. People have, house call grooming has been around for a while. What I'm talking about is the skincare aspect of the grooming. You know, I'm introducing <clears throat> proper skincare and I'm focusing more on the skincare, which is why we don't do bows and bandanas, you know, not a lot. We do it for special occasions. But I feel like it kind of took away, kind of was a distraction from what our mission is. And that's to educate people, uh, clients, our you know, pet owners, on the importance of proper skin care and what grooming really is. You know, grooming is about hygiene. And good hygiene promotes health. And health is beauty. So. <clears throat> this is kind of our message and our mission and we felt like the best way to um, spread our message was to just do it was to just show people what is possible <clears throat> you know and then once we show people what's possible and people see that there is another option out there rather than just shaving their dog or, you know, just washing their stinky dog and then their dog is even more stinky a few days later. <clears throat> they get hot spots and rashes, you know. Rather than all that, you know, I just, <clears throat> they say be the change in the world that you want to see. So yeah, that's literally what I did. I just started offering it to people. <clears throat> and then as far as pricing goes, I realized I'm not competing with anybody as far as service and what I do. So why am I competing with people with my pricing? So that's when I stopped worrying about what other people are charging. <clears throat> I really don't know what the groomers around me are charging. I don't care. I don't ask. Um, some of my clients tell me, you know, oh, they tried this other groomer and they charged more than I did. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Maybe I should charge more. Um, but anyway, but some of them, you know, tell me that other groomers charge a lot less. So, but I, I really don't, I don't, I, that doesn't, affect me at all you know because I feel like I'm not competing with anyone I'm only competing with myself so why would I compare my prices to anyone else's I charge whatever I need to charge you know to sustain my business and so I can provide my family you know with the life with the lifestyle but <clears throat> yeah I, I don't base my decision on pricing based on what others are charging around me um, for me, that doesn't matter, you know, I charge what I need to charge. And I gotta be honest, at first, um, when Kimmy and I came up with the prices, <clears throat> I even said like, who would pay this, <laughs> you know, who would pay this much? Um, I was wrong. Like, you know, this client here, there's already a check waiting for me and it's usually a lot more than what I what I charge and you know another one of my clients <clears throat> she always overpays me you know she always overpays me so much and I remember one time she handed me the check and I looked at the check and I just I was like oh my mouth open <laughs> and because I, I have no poker face I don't have a poker face so I just show my emotions my mouth just opened up 
And I looked at her and I was like, you know how much this is, right? <laughs> and she just kind of looks at me confused. And I was like, what I meant to say was thank you. <laughs> I took it, you know? But anyways, yeah, I mean, when, when you stop worrying about how much you're making, clients seem to stop worrying about how much you're charging. <coughs> oh, you know Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn says something I really like. He says, most people are asking the wrong question on the job. They are asking themselves, what am I getting out of this? You know, what am I getting here? And Jim Rohn says, that's not the right question to ask. The real question we should be asking is, what am I becoming here? What is this job making of me? You know, what am I allowing this job to make of me? You know? <clears throat> now the legs, I'm gonna do a little, sh a little longer. So the legs, <clears throat> so the body is about five eighths of an inch, which is about 16 millimeters. So the legs, we're gonna do seven eighths of an inch. And this is gonna be 22 millimeters. Now, <clears throat> in the dog world, this is a C comb. In the human haircut world, this is a seven comb. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, well, haha, ha, that's a good one. I'll see, I have two Bichons. I love keeping them full and free. I, part of the fun of having a Bichon is that round, fluffy, right? The client doesn't prefer the rounded Bichon head, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna round it with scissors. Hey, you know, don't judge me. <laughs> Mary Royer says, that's wonderful. Will Potato says, not sure how he does it, but I usually save head for last. Yeah, I usually save the head for last. Uh, but I'll scissor the head first. Are you back in Georgia? Yes, back in Georgia. Um, Mary Royer, do you get paid for YouTube? Yeah, so I get paid ad revenue. So the ads that play on my videos, um, those advertisers pay YouTube and YouTube pays me a percentage. <clears throat> um, Mary Royer, I'm, mo I'm mobile and I don't paint nails or bows or hair dye, I, but I do aggressive dogs and low income. Oh, good. that's awesome, Mary. Elsie, that Bijan is so he's perfect, he is. Mary, if people pay extra, I usually, I, I actually try to give some of it back. Duh. No, don't give it back. <clears throat> That's the universe giving you blessings. And when the universe blesses you, you don't give the blessings back. Um, you don't refuse it, you know. Crystal LaCroix, I just joined this video, so I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but there aren't any other groomers who actually do what you do. So there's, a, there's, not, so there's not really a solid market to compare it to anyway. I, yeah, and I don't compare myself to anybody, but yeah. <clears throat> and Mary Royer, going back to not refusing things, um, I was listening to, uh, what is his name? Oh my goodness. Oh man, I'm gonna... Okay, anyways. <clears throat> I was listening to this guy speak, right? He's a well-known speaker, I can't remember his name. <clears throat> but anyways, he was saying that um, when the, when when people offer you things, just say yes, because the universe has a tricky way of uh, using, using people, you know? They say God works best using human hands, but the universe has a way of using us, you know, to help get things to people that they might need, that we may not need. So the example he gave was, let's say somebody offers you a necktie <clears throat> with some weird, you know, hula, hula person on there, and they wiggle what you wiggle, you know? And so you're like, oh my goodness, what would, I, what would I need a necktie with some hula woman on it where she wiggles when I wiggle, you know? He was, and, but he's saying, just accept it anyways. It's being offered to you, the universe is presenting it to you, so just accept it, right? Say, oh, thank you. <clears throat> and then when you get back to your room, <clears throat> your roommate will say, hey, I'm going to this weird party where there is like a hula theme and I'm, I'm, I need this necktie with the hula person on it and she wiggles when I wiggle. I don't know where I'm gonna find one. And you'll say, hey, interestingly enough, somebody just offered me a necktie with a hula woman on it and she wiggles when you wiggle, so here you go. You know, so even though you may not need whatever's being offered to you, he's saying just accept it with gratitude, you know? Knowing that it may be, you may be being used 
to present it to someone else, you know? Okay. Oh man, and what? I end up throwing out the scarf. <laughs> okay, Elsie, you're an awesome groomer, June, but I, seem, I, but I seem to keep missing you. I just moved from Alabama and I'm frequently in Atlanta in Duluth, Georgia. Would love to have you groom my Bijans. Uh, yeah, I would love to as well, but I'm actually booked out for the rest of the year and I can't take new clients, which is why I try to share as much as I can so people can do it themselves. My husband used to groom dogs in Korea. Wow, but now he's only doing it for our dogs, but, if, but we would like to get it done professionally. Awesome. <coughs> um, Mary Royer, sound advice. Will Potato, I really wish the shop I worked at was more knowledgeable about skincare. I feel as though I'm the only one who mentions it, and then I'm looked at as a show off. <coughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but hey, you know, you can't change people. You can only change how you respond to people. Uh, Kim Markey, I'm sure, it sure is. Will Potato, I really admire how you, do your, how you do your job. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, so now the back leg here. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> Put my mask back on. Okay, so the back of the leg here will go against the grain to make it a little shorter. Then we're gonna go down the leg. See? And we're really not taking much off. It's just. It's just like the tips of the hair. And it makes everything just look a little more controlled and neat and tidy. See that? So, but yeah, so what I offer is skincare and I happen to do nice haircuts. So that's how I explain my business um, to people that my focus is skincare and skincare takes a lot longer than hair care. And uh, so once I get the skin clear and healthy, I will then wash and, you know, clip the hair. But my first focus is always on the skin health because if I take care of the skin and the skin is healthy, then the skin is gonna take care of the coat for me and grow beautiful, nice, healthy hair. So then I'll always have a beautiful, healthy, comfortable dog, you know, and, but I'm not really, I'm not really spending time focusing too much on the hair. You know, all, mo the majority of my time is spent taking care of the skin. Whoa. And then at the very end, I just, you know, slap on a nice haircut just so people don't say, you know, well, that's why he talks about the skin so much. Look at his crappy haircuts. <laughs> so I don't want that being said about me. So I do try to do a good haircut so that people don't think that my, you know, the reason I focus so much on the skin is, you know, <laughs> to get away with uh, not doing good haircuts. So, and also the haircut is what everybody sees. It's literally your walking advertisement. Okay, so the legs are done. <coughs> now we do the scissors. <coughs> All right, if you notice, I didn't put the head because we're gonna scissor the head into the body. So the head is gonna be nice and round and we're gonna scissor a nice round, you know, shape the head with the scissors blend it into the body, you know, blend that back of the neck into the body, and then we'll shape the feet, and he's pretty much done. <clears throat> Maybe like 20 more minutes scissoring, but see, the haircut really is the easy part. Um, it's everything that we did before the haircut that leads up to the haircut that's the hard part. So, here we go. Let's see here. Okay. 
Kim Maki, sure. Yeah, hair, skincare is so important. Wheel Potato, I, I really admire how you do your job. Thank you. I probably read that already. But hey, why not read it again, right? <laughs> Mary Ray, did you, take a, did you take a skincare course or learn it on your own? <clears throat> I, the first course I took was from the ISCC, the International Society of Canine Cosmetologists. And that's where I learned, um, first learned about all the skin stuff. But then there's so many books out there um, and medical books as well, you know, Kirk and Moeller, Small Animal Dermatology. <coughs> so, I've already filed his nails while I was washing them. Okay. <coughs> so now all I'm gonna do is scissor. Oh, I can get him to sit. Oh. Okay. So, there we go. Sit, buddy. There you go. Good boy. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> see if I can get a good spot. Okay, I can see the scissoring so people can see my scissor skills. That was kidding. <clears throat> okay, so I like to start right here in between the eyes. So, right here, I'm going to comb this side up. Thinners, get my thinning shears, and I'm gonna do at this angle here, diagonally up. Okay, buddy. And just clear out right there at the corner of the eyes, that brown hair, anyways, right there. So that's clear out. And you don't wanna go too high up on the Bijan, because <clears throat> we're gonna need this middle area here to kind of create that Bijan. Um, frown, I guess, that look right there, right here. So I'm not going to cut too much into the corner there. Now on this side here, comb this side up the same way. And then we'll get rid of this. Okay. But we're going to keep all this here in the middle so we can use that to shape that that Bijan look. Right here real quick. Just kind of just a little bit more. There we go. <clears throat> so now you can kind of see his eyes better, right? Just by clipping just that little bit of hair, you can see his eyes better. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna make that Bijan visor. So we're gonna comb this hair forward. And then we're gonna literally cut the shape right into the eye, right into the outside corner of the eye, right there like that. See that? Do that same thing on the other side here. All right? Now, we're already getting that shape, right? That little, <clears throat> Bijan frown right there. Right? <clears throat> now, I'm going to comb it, I mean, cut this, comb it forward. And then I like to come around this way as well. Like that. <clears throat> so we. Open up that eye right there. And we'll do that on this other side. Oh, see that? There we go. Now on this side, we'll do the same thing. Open that eye up. There we go, see that? <coughs> so now, comb all of this. And the ear, we want the ear to literally become a part of the head. So we're gonna scissor the ear and blend it into that head to make it nice and round. <coughs> and now he's finally grown enough hair to where we can actually do that. Before we were just kind of doing the best we could with the coat that we had. So, just gonna go around, <clears throat> shave everything round. No 
ですが See, I don't want to lift the ear up. <coughs> you don't want to lift the ear up and cut in under the ear. You want to let the ear lay flat, you know, lay up, you know, naturally against the head and scissor that ear round and blend it into the head. See that? Sometimes they move, and so you gotta, that's why I like to keep my hand on them at all times, so that sometimes I can kind of feel they're, that they're about to move before they actually do it, and even if it's just the slightest little move, you know, it's kind of like if, uh, if your hairstylist was, you know, using scissors and trying to trim up the hair head, and then you turn to get your phone or something, or look at your phone, or you know, look, turn to look at somebody, you know, your hairstyle is like, oh, you know, can you stay still? Well, unfortunately, um, that works with humans, but it doesn't work with dogs. With a dog, you're like, hey, can you kind of keep your head like this? Uh, you know. <laughs> I like to say that groomers are kind of like you know artists you know like sculptors because just like Michelangelo said you know we do not create a beautiful Bijan a beautiful Bijan is already there we just chisel away the excess I said don't pick it up, but <coughs> unfortunately there's no way I was going to get that piece of hair once I picked it up. So now I'm going to round out the muzzle here. After I get that little <laughs> hair I see. Okay, so we're going to round this out. There we go.
So, <coughs> so far this is what it's looking like. Still, look, you know, we're starting to get the shape, right? That Bichon shape. Now I'm gonna have to clean up that middle part a little bit. But now I can get my thinners and just kind of shape everything, kind of smooth everything out with the thinners. <coughs> oh, okay, well there's some comments here. Uh, he's looking at the camera now, LOL. Will Potato, I'm sure you mentioned it before, what kind of curves you're using. It's um, Paw Brothers. Paw Brothers uh, Comfort Shears. I think they're like eight, uh, 77 bucks or 80 bucks on online on Amazon. <clears throat> um, Elsie, I'm glad you're rounding his head. I'm sorry, but I can't stand it when people cut Bijan like poodles. The long ears, very short coat, nearly shaving the, yeah, me neither. Um, part of the, having the, you know, having the breed, part of the fun of it is, is, you know, getting the breed look. It's so amazing that you could not groom him several visits ago and how calm he is now. Well, exactly, right? And Watman, I live in the rural Midwest and we have lots of groomers. Very few know how to groom the different breeds. Yeah, you're telling me. Mary Royer, Ann Watman, I'm in Minnesota, and my clients want shave downs. Uh, and I, I refuse shave downs. And I tell them, um, you know, call the next groomer. <laughs> um, Ann Watman, small non shedding breeds are very popular. Even though mine is a mix, I'm fussy. I prefer doing myself and making my own. Exactly. And Ann, this, it, that's why I made this channel. This channel is for you, Ann. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, Whale Potato, really, I'm going to try them. Been having such a hard time finding decent pairs. Um, now, th now, these are not a decent pair. Just to let you know, I'm constantly cleaning them out. These are not a decent pair, and they're not that sharp either. Um, just so you know. <laughs> uh, Whale Potato, like my Super Gators, they've stopped holding an edge. <clears throat> yes, I'm not, I'm not I'm endorsing those, those. It's just the pair I'm using right now um, because it was sent to me, I'll be honest, by a good friend of mine for free. So that's just, it's just... Like I said, if these scissors um, didn't, finally just didn't cut anymore, then I would use my Red Robin shears. I don't have them out right now, but I would use my Red Robin shears. They're straight. If those didn't work, then I'll just do the whole haircut using my thinners, you know? And then if that doesn't work, I'll just chew it here. I'll just chew it off, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry so much about the tools or how you're gonna remove the hair. Right, buddy? As long as you know how you're, why you're gonna remove it, and where, what, where to cut, you know, then how you remove the hair doesn't matter so much. Okay, so now, let's, <coughs> let's shape this up a little bit. So with my thinners, there you go. Okay, buddy. Again, I know I mentioned this in other videos, but the way I'm holding him, he's free to get out if he wants to. So I, I always give them an obvious way out. And I want to give them an obvious way out because I don't want him to have to fit, try to figure out a way out on his own and possibly injure himself. So I just give him the obvious way out. <clears throat> like right now I'm holding him here. Obviously, if he moves up, he's out. So I give them the obvious way out and I let them take it as many times as they need, but then I gently, you know, bring them back to the activity so that I make it clear to them, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna be very forceful. I'm not gonna, you know, um, I'm not gonna restrain you so much, you know, and force you to go through it. But I am asking you to do this activity with me and it's kind of important and we've got to get this done, you know? <laughs> so the more you cooperate, the faster this will get done. And once they kind of get that, once they understand that, then, then it's so easy, you know? Look how nice he's, he is, look how well he's behaving.
Alrighty, so there's the head. Hey, good boy, Royce. Look at you. Look at you, buddy. Look at that. Oh my goodness, you look so nice and handsome. Look at that. Good boy. <laughs> And uh, Mary Royer, I think we get a lot of the <coughs> same thing here. I enjoy seeing my dog looking nice. I can shave my dog down, but scissoring is an art in my opinion. Yeah, and you'll be surprised. Um, I, I don't know how I've become like the groomer that every, all the other groomers all around the world like kind of let their problems out onto. You know, they vent and I welcome it, you know, and I vent a lot. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe because I vent and I, I just share my feelings. Um, you know, other groomers feel comfortable sharing their feelings with me, but I'm serious. It seems like a trend all over the world, all over the world. It seems like people have the same grooming problems. <laughs> uh, whale potato. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, my goodness. Rather than show my ugly mug. Look at this guy. Royce. Oh, my good. Look at his tail wave. He is so, oh, my goodness. Proud of himself, you know? Okay, so now. <coughs> oh. Okay. Oh. There we go. So now I'm gonna finish scissoring his feet round and he's pretty much done. <coughs> okay. So we'll start with the back. Elsie, you're honest and genuine. You truly care about the dogs. Wow, thank you so much. Cause actually this is all an act. I mean, I've been taking some acting classes these days. So this is all an act. I was here, <laughs> just a little quick. I want to stick I want to stick to only grooming little dogs and Asian fusion types of styles and not necessarily breed standard, shave downs. Do you feel there's a market for that? Yeah, I mean, if, if you specialize in it and you show people what's, what you can do, yes, yes, there's, there's a market for all kinds. You know, um, for me, for example, when I go through the art museums and stuff, um, you know, Picasso's kind of abstract art doesn't really do it for me. You know, I don't really, I don't really, uh, I guess, appreciate that kind of art, you know, I, and I, I appreciate that it is a, a, a truly, you know, unique art form. But for me, I like realistic art, you know, there's this huge, huge mural of like a just a mountain scene. It looks so real and somebody painted it. That's what impresses me. I, that, you know, but that's the thing. But is, is that to say that Pablo Picasso is not a real artist, you know, that Pablo Picasso's art doesn't. Um, it, you know, it's not worth showing in the art museums because I don't like that kind of abstract art. No. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> if you think of yourself as an artist, then the Asian fusion style, you know, that can be your, um, your style, your art, art style, right? Your art form. And then the people who like that will find you, you know? And, but the thing is, as long as you're very clear, then the people who don't really like that will, will also know not to bother you either, which is a great thing because <clears throat> what, if, um, what if I didn't know that Pablo Picasso had that weird abstract art style and I go and pay him, you know, thousands of dollars, whatever it was at that time, you know, I pay him very well to, to paint a family portrait of me and my family and it comes out looking like <laughs> ridiculous cartoonish characters. You know, and then I get enraged, I get angry, and I demand my money back. So that kind of is what happens at the grooming shops, you know. So as long as you're, you make it clear, this is my style. <coughs> I don't shave dogs, you know. And then the people who like their dogs shaved avoid me. And so we don't have to run into those problems. Okay. <coughs> uh, he's so handsome. Oh, thank you. I'm also married, Sh oh, Crystal. No, I was kidding. I'm just kidding. I know you're talking about the dog. Um, Ann Watman. I like, I like realistic art too. I'm an artist and that's what I love. Exactly. Me too. I love that form. Um, LC, Bijan shouldn't be shaved because they need their hair for insulation, right? Not only insulation, but their oils being produced by the skin uses the hair to travel. Uh, thank you so much for putting out these videos, these live videos. I'm thrilled that I've managed to get on several times, several recently. You have helped me more than you can imagine. Thank, thank you, Anne. That really, that really motivates me, inspires me, it really encourages me. Okay, so, his feet. <coughs> All we gotta do.
There we go. And then <clears throat> I'm going to pick it up very lightly just so I can kind of scissor the messy hairs that stick out here on the bottom. There we go. And now tidy that up. You know, and it's interesting because just like I prefer the natural art art form, you know, when they're when I look at paintings, you know, I love the natural landscapes and things like that. It's interesting that I choose that as like my style for grooming as well, you know. I love keeping the dog looking natural, you know, and just accentuating their natural um, you know, features that make them look so strong and beautiful. You know, I just, and I tell people all the time, <coughs> um, you'd be surprised how hard it is to keep a dog looking natural. <laughs> okay, so here, I'm scissoring in the, the angle here in the back. <clears throat> that way you see that nice little angle there. There we go. And he's standing a little weird, so it might be hard to see. Okay. <clears throat> so since he sat there, I'll just go ahead and finish this front leg here. So, clean this up a little bit. Okay. Tighten that up. Tighten that up. Even that up there. Alright. Okay. So I was listening to an audiobook where they were talking about <clears throat> the kind of history of artists, you know, and artisans, and um, how uh, before the days of the Medici family um, in Italy, or I think it was Venice, um, artists were not really well respected, you know, and basically anybody who chose to be an artist, you know, um, it was pretty much accepted that you were going to struggle the rest of your life. <laughs> Um, but then the Medici family came along, this very wealthy family, and started to support artists and created a school, you know, like an a, a art institute, like an academy for the arts. Um, and then that's where um, Leonardo, Dica Leonardo, DiCaprio, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo were both discovered by the Medici family, um, <clears throat> you know, in their schools. But anyways... I just thought it was really fascinating that there was a time where artists would dedicate their lives to their passion, to their art form, right? And they would find families who would become their patrons, right? And they were called patrons. <clears throat> and the, their, the artist's patrons would um, provide the artist with the living, you know, so that he doesn't have to worry about um, how to support himself, right? So they would basically um, get, support him, you know, with food and money and things like that so he can take care of himself. And the artist, like uh, Michelangelo, would just continue to do his art, <clears throat> you know, supported by uh, wealthy patrons. And I just, I don't know, for me, and this is just me thinking out loud, but I was just like, wow, 
you know, like I almost feel like a connection to the artists of old doing what I'm doing. It almost feels like that's what I'm doing. Like I'm finding patrons, you know, families who are able to help um, sustain my lifestyle so that I can continue to do my art without the burden of, you know, struggling to pay bills and, you know, struggling to try to keep, you know, food on the table for my family. You know, so without having to worry about all of that, you know, I'm, I'm just able to, you know, create the best art I possibly can <clears throat> and just really focus on that and mastering my skills. And these families are like my patrons and they, they support that. I just, I, I don't know, I just feel like this deep connection to history, you know? Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> oh, wow, we have potato. <clears throat> you have helped me as well. My shop owner is pretty stuck in her ways and I'm, I rely on myself to research, take classes and watch things like your videos to grow. Whale Potato, I was exactly where you were at, where you are at right now. Um, you've helped met so many of us. Thank you guys. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but you've helped me too, you know? Um, do you think anybody cared about me before I had 20,000 next to my name? You know, June the Groomer and then you see 21K, you know, on YouTube. Before that, well, I mean, even before that, when I had like 10K still, people were impressed. Do you think that I would, I would be anything without your support? I wouldn't, and I am, I am so deeply aware of that, which is why I feel so grateful, and I feel so, I almost feel obligated. I almost feel like I owe this to you, you know? Obviously, I'm not gonna set my, upset my clients. You know, they're my patrons, like I just said. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna upset my patron families. Um, so as long as they're okay with it, I, I wanna share as much as I can because I realize all of my success is due to your generosity. I would be nobody if you guys didn't watch and share and you, you've made me, you've made me important, you know? Anyway, and I really appreciate that. All right, enough, enough preaching here. <clears throat> so these two feet are done, see that? Nice, and then we can go back over with the thin, thinning shears and round it and make it softer. But those two uh, feet are pretty much done. I did this front leg with him laying down, you know, because I want him to be comfortable. There we go, and I don't really need him to stand for that. <clears throat> All right. You know, guys, um, there were times when, when I was at the Chambly house grooming, you know, out of that house. And this is after we filled our business and I um, was well, just in a lot of debt. The bank came and took our car, which was paid off. <clears throat> but um, I used the title, you know, to get a little loan from the bank to try to you know, jumpstart our business. So when we lost the business, you know, and then we had a couple of tough weeks and money just didn't come in the way we planned. And so the bank took our car, you know, and <coughs> I looked in the fridge and there's like no food. You know, we would just play, we would play like kind of games with our girls and not let them know that we didn't have any food to eat. And we would just tell them like, let's go to the playground. And then at the playground, there at the, at the park, there was a community garden. <clears throat> and then we would go to the community garden and they could run around and water the plots, you know, of vegetables. Um, and we would, my wife and I would pick, you know, eggplants, carrots, bell peppers, even lettuce, you know, there was all kinds of awesome vegetables there. And we would pick vegetables that, so we could make some salad or, you know, whatever, and just maybe fry some eggplant even. And yeah, I mean, during those times, it was just so, t I remember one time there was a snowstorm. We didn't have a car, and, you know, and we got a little bit of money that day from our clients, you know, from the dogs we groomed. And so um, we were gonna go buy some cereal, you know, just, we were just gonna go buy some stuff to feed our girls, you know, so they're not so hungry. <clears throat> and my wife and I, you know, we can always just, you know, get by. And as long as our girls were fed, I, I was okay. 
Um, but yeah, it was just, we, I remember walking one time with our girls and I remember, you know, Ava must have been like six years old and Annabelle was like uh, four and we were walking in the snowstorm to Walmart because we couldn't leave the girls at home either, you know, by themselves. <clears throat> and I remember walking to Walmart in the snow, you know, trying to resist the the feeling, the the, the fear um, that my one of my daughters was going to get sick, you know, and how am I going to afford that? You know, if I have to take her to the hospital or the doctor, like, how am I going to afford that? But anyways, the only reason why I'm going into all of this is because during that time, during that time when things were just so rough and I just, I, I literally had like nothing to hold on to, I would stay up late at night replying back to YouTube comments. You know, I would stay up till like three in the morning just replying back to comments because for some reason during that time, I don't know, just reaching out to people and answering their questions and also you know, um, expressing my gratitude for their time and supporting the channel. I don't know, it just gave me hope. It, it just put me in a good place where I could sleep at night, you know, after I did that. <clears throat> and so, I don't know if you guys know it or not, but seriously, um, your support carried me through some of the toughest times. And I don't think I would have gotten through it without that kind of support. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. You know, <clears throat> now that I think about it, I think a lot of the time, a lot of the struggle was unnecessary. I think it was because I was trying so hard to change the industry. I was so hard, trying so hard to change what other groomers were doing or, you know, change the behavior of pet owners, you know, and things like that. And I think that's why I was having such a hard time and struggling, you know? But then once I let go of the need to change anyone else but myself, and now it's just like, you know, if somebody says, oh, I don't really like how long it took, or I don't really like this or that, or, you know, I just say, okay. And I find someone else to, <laughs> to groom their dog for, you know? Like, I, I realize now it's just, it's very simple. <clears throat> you don't have to argue, you know, you just, oh, one person, sent me a message the other day, and I don't, I really don't know what this was in reference to, <clears throat> but um, he says, uh, watch your language, be a professional. And that was, that was literally it. <laughs> that was literally all that was in the message. Um, watch your language, be a professional. So I replied, okay. That's it. <laughs> you know? What else is there to say? Conversation over. Nothing, nothing to argue about, you know? Watch your language. Be a professional. Okay. Conversation over. <laughs> but yeah, rather than try to convince that guy or, you know, or, you know go back and forth with him, you know, oh, what, what video were you talking about? You know, maybe look at the context, you know? I'm sorry, you know, maybe I'll try to... None of that. Just, okay. <clears throat> it's so fun too, when someone calls you a name, you know, <clears throat> and they say, um, like, like, God, I think you're just so stupid. You say, okay. And they say, see, you know, you're so stupid that you don't even, you don't even know, you know, how to respond when someone calls you stupid. You say, all right. And then they'll say, <clears throat> I mean, are you not even going to say anything bad? You know, don't you know I'm calling you stupid? Say, yeah, <clears throat> I heard you. <clears throat> and here's, here's one thing. Ralph Waldo Emerson says that most people don't realize that their opinion of the world 
it's also a confession of character. A lot of times, you spot it, you got it. A lot of times when people <clears throat> are saying things bad about you or pointing things out that are, you know, that's wrong or, you know, they're, a lot of times they're revealing themselves to you. Okay, now this side here. <coughs> so now this is the leg that's bothering him. Oh man, if I can, maybe I'll put it right here. Okay, oh, maybe, will it work? Kinda, no, okay. Oh, maybe that'll work, no. Oh, okay. <coughs> maybe, maybe what I'll do is turn the table this way. There we go. So this is that gimp leg, you know? Not gimp leg, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but the bad leg, the leg that was kind of just hanging off of his side there when we first found him. So this leg we want to be a little gentle with, but see that? I don't know. So see that right there? See how this hair here just kind of looks messy? I wonder if I can just leave this here and scissor it. So I'll show you how it doesn't take a lot of snipping to get the look that you want. So see how kind of messy it looks here? So we're just gonna trace that, right? Tidy that up. Tidy this up. See that? And we can also kind of tidy some of that. See that? So all of a sudden, look at that. Just looks, looks cleaner, right? And smoother. Oh. See that? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> there we go. It's hard to breathe, and then it feels like something's like right at my throat, you know, it causes that gag reflex. Okay, Now, I'm not gonna put a lot of weight on this leg, but I'm gonna try to get it to stand a little bit so that I can kind of get that shape, that nice round shape. So I'm not gonna make him put his weight on that foot, but, I'm, but I am trying to get it to stay on the, on the ground there. So that, oh. oh. That's not good, I just made a little dip in the... <laughs> There we go.
Alrighty. Good boy, Royce. See, so now, <clears throat> now that he's all done and we got the shape done everywhere, all we have to do now is just kind of go through and see if there's any places where we need to soften him a little bit more, like right there, right there, okay, right there. Make it a little tighter. There we go. There we go. There we go. And this foot looks already pretty nice and tight. There we go. Kind of shape up, tidy up these angles here. Tighten them up a little bit. <coughs> okay. There we go. Okay. <coughs> so now, Royce, look at that. You're all done, buddy. Oh my goodness, you look nice, Royce. Okay, let me let him down here. That way we can get a look at him on the ground. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh. <clears throat> okay, let me read the um, comments, catch up on them once I get them down. There you go, buddy. Oh my goodness, Royce. <laughs> Look at this guy, isn't he so handsome and so sweet? Royce, oh my goodness, Royce, I'm so proud of you. Mwah. I'm so proud of you, Royce. Thank you, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, I even got a kiss. Okay, all righty. Oh. <coughs> that was awesome, I even got a kiss. Okay, uh, Elsie, oh, he looks sleepy, yeah, until Till he gets down, look. Now he's ready to go. <laughs> look at how awesome he looks. Soft and fluffy. Um, you are also maintaining a traditional look. I enjoy the fun stuff, but seeing dogs clipped correctly is really, I, I love honoring the natural look as much as possible. Now I know he's a pet dog. I know it's, you know, we need to shorten it a little bit to make it easier to maintain for the owners. But I mean, you know, I love honoring that traditional natural look you know keep them looking as natural as possible but just tailor it tailor it a little bit um to the so that the owners um can you know enjoy it uh nikki hammond as a child of a groomer you're the only other person besides my mom i have seen work with a dog and i feel comfortable taking advice from wow that's huge oh my goodness Nikki Ham, another, another groomer's videos keep popping up in my feed and I just can't with her. <laughs> She's preachy. I'm, I get preachy, I'm sorry. Uh, pushy. Ooh, maybe I'm pushy. And I can't see her heart in her work. Okay, well, I, that, I, I put my heart in, I wear my heart on my sleeves, so I guess I don't have a problem there. But I, I feel like sometimes I can be preachy and pushy as well. I try to, I try to be careful. I wanna learn from those who care. Why well, care maybe too much sometimes, you know, I shouldn't care. I, I, should, I should try to like not, not care so much, you know, sometimes it's a flaw. Um, whale potato, that's a great way to look at things. You are so inspiring. Thank you, thank you, Elsie. I'm glad that you and your wife have gotten over such hard obstacle and are doing well grooming. Thank you, that's sad that you had to go through that, but it's inspiring that you never gave up. Thank you so much, Elsie. And that's the thing is like, I realized <clears throat> the the movies that I love the best 
are the movies that involve struggle, you know? It starts off with like, you know, the, the hero just, you know, all disheveled and just, you know, maybe waking up with liquor bottles all over the place, you know, ashtrays, his life is a mess, you know? And then that Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of character picks himself up and saves the world, you know? I love those kind of movies. Not the kind of movies where everything was fine and the end, you know? Um, hey, Ari Guattari, hey, did I miss the best experience of your... <laughs> yeah, Ari, if you're just joining now, don't worry, you didn't miss anything. Probably just the most inspiring, the most fa fascinating experience I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Uh, Will Potato, oh, so handsome. Thank you, thank you very much. I've been, I've been working on this. No, it's, I'm just kidding. I know you're talking about the dog. Uh, Triple Lotus, handsome guy. Oh, that's love. Thank you, thank you for sharing. You're welcome, Triple Lotus. Nikki Hammond, what a cutie little fluffer. Yeah, right? <coughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness, and now he's not growling at me or anything, you know? Um, Looking good. Thank you very much for doing these videos. You are truly an inspiration. Thank you, Crystal. Elsie, that's exactly why I admire your work. You keep them natural. I keep my Bichons full or sometimes in a puppy cut with a rounded head all year round. Awesome. You did so good, Roy. Oh my goodness. I'm so proud of you, Royce. Oh my goodness. I'm so proud of you. Such a good boy. Let's go back downstairs, buddy. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let him back down with his family. I'm gonna clean up in here and then I'm gonna soak. I'm gonna soak in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, it turn on that TV. Honey, I'll be home probably next week. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I'm gonna clean up here and get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, and, and thank you guys for all the compliments. Oh my goodness. Shoot, if I'm ever feeling down, I'm just gonna hit live. <laughs> I'll see you guys.